Hey guys, how's it going? Today I wanted to share with you how I made this heart-shaped wall planter using a cement mixture called Papercrete. You can use any cement mixture you would like, but I prefer to use Papercrete because it's lightweight and I really enjoy working with it. The mold that I used is a heart-shaped pan that I found at the thrift store, but you can use any shape that you want or have on hand. And I also used some mesh, wire mesh, sandwiched in between the paper crate to give a little bit of added strength. And the mixture is three parts paper pulp, two parts Portland cement, and one part perlite. If you'd like to learn a little bit more of the basics of the paper creep mixture and paper pulp, I will link a playlist for you down in the description box and you can watch those videos and get a little bit more information. Then I went ahead and mixed this batch up. And then I went ahead and started to fill the mold. And I recommend um, just as like a measure of precaution to always spray your molds with a little bit of oil just to make it easier to get out of the out of the mold. It probably would be just fine with this one anyway, but just in case I always like to use it. And then I just went ahead and did my hamburger technique where I get a handful of the paper creep, kind of make a patty in my hand first just to compress it before I put it in, into the mold and then I press it down really well. So once I put a decent layer of the paper creep in, I put the wire mesh that I had cut into a heart shape in just to give a little bit of added strength. I then went in with another layer on top of that to encase the mesh and to fill up my mold. So once I was satisfied with how that looked, I put the mold into a trash bag and this will help keep the piece moist as it's drying and, and it won't dry out too fast. And I usually leave it in there for a day or two and then um, pop it out of the mold and let it dry. And then this is what it looked like when it was completely dry. And to create the cavity where, um, or like the pocket where the plant's gonna go in, I used some wet sand to create a mound where I wanted that to be and then I placed the paper creep on top of that. So as you see here, I'm just wetting the sand. You don't want it too wet, but you want it wet enough that it just sticks together. And then when the paper creeps dry, you can take the sand out and then you're left with um, kind of a reservoir and that's where you will put your plants. So once I was happy with the shape, I went ahead and cleaned up the sides with a paintbrush and got all of the loose sand out of the way. And I mixed up another batch of paper creep, which again is three parts paper pulp, two parts Portland cement, and one part perlite. I mixed it up really well. And I wanted to show you kind of in detail what I look for when I'm mixing a paper creep. And the texture should be in a way kind of clay-like, but a little bit more crumbly. But you want to be able to make it into a ball and it stick together and it be wet enough that it's not just gonna crumble. 
and my test is I will make a ball and put it in my fist and kind of um, throw it up a little bit and if it doesn't fall apart then that's kind of what I look for but if I throw it up and it lands in my hand and it crumbles apart then I know it needs a little bit more water. Um, so then I wet my piece so you want to wet the, um, the, the dry paper crete and in my mind I just feel like if it's wet it's going to adhere together like the, the new paper crete to the old paper crete it'll adhere a little bit better. So I did my hamburger technique again, where I made a ball, made it into kind of a patty, and then I, um, that way I knew exactly how thick it was gonna be, and then I just placed that and kind of patched it together to cover that entire mound. And I used a paintbrush just to um, kind of blend the, the different patches together and make it really nice and smooth and I made sure to press it into the older paper crete that I had made previously, like the base, and I pressed it down really well so that that bonded together. And you can use water as you go. I just like to dip my fingers in the water and kind of pat the paper crete to really smooth it and get the nice texture because um, it, it won't self-level or anything like that. The way that it looks is the way it's gonna dry. It's not gonna flatten out or anything, so just be aware of that. If it has lumps and bumps, that's how it's going to dry and that's what it's going to look like. Keep in mind though, you could always uh, sand it down and perfect it once it's dry. It's not the biggest deal, but I kind of try and like to get it, you know, as perfect as possible or get it to what, the way I'm wanting it to look as much as possible before it dries. And then I just made sure right here, as you can see, that the, the pocket was kind of even like that, that the sand like I wasn't pushing down into the sand and that that pocket was open enough to be able to plant something so this is what it looked like when I was finished with that just patting it down for any minor imperfections and then I placed this into a bag for a couple of days and um, keep in mind in like right now it's really hot where I live it's like 100 to 110 so I definitely want to make sure I place this in the shade so it doesn't dry out you know too fast so really I just put it in a bag and I put it under this table and I leave it for a couple days and then I come back and it's usually um, pretty dry but it should still look a little bit darker gray than when you uh, actually take it out and you let it dry for another day and then it'll be a lighter gray Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer. So this is what it looked like when it was completely dry and I was confident that it wasn't going to collapse and I took the sand out with my paintbrush and then I gave it a good uh, rinse with the hose. And I felt that the planting pocket, the top of it wasn't uh, even enough, so I took some sandpaper and I sanded that down just to perfect it a little bit. And I sanded the, the front down as well, um, just to make it look a little bit more even, and this is what it looked like. So after that, I drilled two holes at the top and I used picture hanging wire, because that's what I had on hand to hang it, but you could use um, rope or twine or whatever you have on hand. And then I decided I wanted to stain it or try, I've never tried wood stain on paper creep before, so I decided to try it. And the color I used is ash. So the stain definitely worked really well um, and I even tried to see how waterproof it was and when I put water on it, the water just like beaded on top of it, it didn't sink in. So I do think it's a good option, but I thought this stain was just a little bit too dark. So I mixed together some uh, acrylic paints with some water to water it down 
and I did a sponge painting technique on top of the the wood stain and uh, lightened it up just a little bit and I was happy with how that turned out. And this is the final look. Um, I'm really happy with it. I think you could do so many different things with this. You could um, make it really colorful. You could leave it as is, that's totally fine too. But you could use wood stains, acrylic paints, whatever you have on hand, get creative and have fun. And then I used this um, kind of hanging succulent. I think it's called String of Bananas. I'm not 100% sure, so let me know down below if you know. Um, and I, I took it apart. Basically, these are like rooted cuttings. So they are individuals and I took them apart and stuck them in one by one just so I could get them precisely where I wanted them so they hung over the, the front um, very nicely. Then I used a squirt bottle with water just to get them watered in well and to get the soil to settle down into the reservoir. So this is the final product. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.